Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Uh, today's video was inspired because I was just kind of looking around our studio and I realized we have a lot of Lego Star Wars custom spaceships. And I don't just mean a lot, we have a ton of models in our studio. And for some of our favorite ship designs, we have just built them over and over again at a bunch of different sizes. And I realized that we never actually did any type of comprehensive comparison videos for any of the duplicate ships. So today that's what we're gonna try out. I decided to grab four models off of the shelves that are all one ship. One of my favorite ships and I wanna show you how they all compare. So we've got the flagship of our Rebel fleet, the Nebulon B Redemption from the designer 2 Impaired. It's done in micro scale, but don't let the word micro throw you off. That just means one 250 scale. So it matches with the rest of the micro fleet and anything that we call micro scale on the channel. This has got its own video, by the way. And then there is the Nebulon B in MIDI scale. This is designed by the builder Fly in Space. MIDI is just the words mini and middle kind of squished together. At least that's what I think it is. It basically means a ship or a model that's about a foot long or so. This model just happens to be exactly one 625 scale, but that's not necessarily intentional. And this model too has got its own video. Next up is the Lego official set 77904 from the year 2020. I think this was a promotional model. And this one's, well, nearly official. Most of the parts here were actually sourced. So I just ordered a couple online to finish it off. You can probably spot a couple of differences here and there. And not that you asked, but this ship is scaled in at 1,970. And last up is another mock from the designer to impaired. We have the Nebulon B in nanoscale, or as my Scottish friend says, the Nebulon Wii. This little guy is just one 1,375 scale, and that intentionally lines up perfectly with one of the biggest models in the studio, also from Two Impaired, the Imperial Star Destroyer Eviscerator. Cough, cough, that's also got a video of its own, or maybe a couple. Alrighty, let's start off by taking a close look at the micro scale Escort Frigate Nebulon B. Here it is at 1.2 meters long, and what do you get with this absolutely massive size? Well, first off, you get a lot Lot more details. With a larger canvas, you can paint on more features, plain and simple. And when it comes to a greeble heavy model like this, a designer has essentially an endless amount of elements to add. With enough thought and care, each little patch of the build can be given its own unique characteristics. I could have chosen a variety of other ships to do a size comparison video today, but the detailed aspects of this Nebulon B made it my first choice for sure. At over a meter long, this creation has no mirrored matching details between port and starboard which is just crazy to think about that's like double the effort and double the design well maybe not double the design time but quite a lot of extra effort was put into the creation of this model and it really really shows now the next biggest difference with a big honking size of a model in terms of attributes is that it now has increased space to create more accurate proportions. Now I get that a lot of folks may not prioritize dimensional precision when it comes to just enjoying a Lego creation. In some cases, accuracy might not actually be like a benefit to some creations, but it's a unique type of challenge, especially for experienced builders and designers. The quote unquote limitation of aiming for precise structural placements often forces a builder to become more creative or sophisticated or efficient with the internal approach to a model. And that can be a really rewarding experience when you manage to pull it off. Now I'm not gonna be doing like a ton of direct photo overlays here to convince you that the proportions are very, very good. They are very good though. It makes more sense to me to just point out some of my favorite examples of dimensional accuracy on a big guy like this. Check out how thin this light bluish gray angular armor plating is close to the dark bluish gray internal rounded nose. Hardly any gap here. These two sections really just hug together and the same goes for the shaping in the rear. There's a lot of overlapping detail with the layers of greebled decks against some of that angular side plating. It is just fantastic. Also, this model has lights. Now I did a lot of solo talking about the big, big model so I could sort of set the stage to compare it 
with Fly in Space's MIDI Nebulon B. But before I jump into all that, first I do want to say that you can get the building instructions for these models at BrickVault.toys. With an instructions purchase comes a PDF guide for the build and a digital parts list for ordering your pieces online. All of our models are hand tested for durability, instructions are tested to make the model easier to build, and the parts for the creation are chosen for availability. If you buy the instructions from us, you will be able to put together this model in real life, which is not always the case in the custom model instructions market, and buying from us also directly supports the talented designers that we work with, which once again is not always the case in the instructions marketplaces. So featured today are the talented designers to Impaired and Fly in Space, who've got a ton of great mocks under their belt. Check that link in the description below. Okay, let's jump into the MIDI Nebby, the MIDI Nebulon B. With less than half the size, it's 48 centimeters long, it's got a lot less connection options available when choosing how to portion out the overall shape. Lego bricks only get so small, so things start to become more difficult as you get smaller, sort of, to a degree. Now, considering its size, the model here pulls off some incredible feats of details and dimension. The nose has a lot of smooth, rounded tapering, great greebles, and you still get a lot of asymmetry, which is something you definitely want for the Nebulon. Now getting into some comparison shots, at the smaller size it's a bit more difficult to marry up the gap between the armor and the nose. There are also some bigger gaps when showing the exposed decks towards the rear. And frankly, I feel like I'm kind of nitpicking here because the proportions and dimensions are still pretty darn excellent. But overall, there's not nearly as much fidelity compared to a model that has more than six times the parts. Now things change up a lot when you get to the official Lego set. It's not much smaller than the MIDI model, 31 centimeters, but it's only got about a third of the bricks compared to the other one. Now the design approach between the two builds is wildly different, and that's the reason these two models with uh, the least amount of difference in size has the most dramatic distance in overall appearance. They look very, very different. There are a lot less colors in the official Lego model, both of the different cylindrical shapes in the front, and also it's lacking a lot of dark gray tones along the body as well. And when you look at all four models, it's very, very easy to spot the Lego creation compared to the custom ones purely from color scheme alone. But here's an interesting question for you. Is that actually less accurate? When you look at the original ILM models, it's pretty clear there are some green, tan, and brown tones in the ship, but they are washed out AF. Look at the ship as it appears in universe. The tones are so subtle that I could see people arguing. I could genuinely see a solid argument that states the nearly all gray version of the Nebulon B actually looks closer in appearance to what you see on screen. Now the details and proportions of the official Lego build are very different here. The baseline shapes are still very present though. The nose, the long bit going down the front, the thin waist, the fat booty. It looks like a Nebulon B for sure, but when looking through each section, the resolution of the model is a lot lower here in terms of overall detail. It's like a 480p. So if the big guy's 2K, then the MIDI pulls in at a solid 1080p. And maybe you skip 720, and who knows about the Nano? I don't really know. But don't get me wrong, LEGO is not making bad models. They know exactly what they're doing. They made a good looking ship that a lot of Star Wars fans will really like and they constructed it without making it too difficult to build or expensive to produce. And on top of that, it is a breeze to put together. Back to the wide shot. The Lego model is like a two out of 10 in terms of difficulty. It's pretty much a walk in the park. This big boy is, I don't know, I'd probably put it like at a seven, maybe an eight. It's got a ton of details. You really wanna line up all those small pieces correctly so they line up just right. It's fairly intricate, lots and lots of parts and you gotta stay consistent, but no head splitting connections. Now the MIDI, I would say is honestly around a nine, maybe even a 10 for some people. The reason you still have these wonderful details and proportions in a relatively small package is because finessed, delicate connections are required to pull a lot of them off. Great, great instructions, extremely thoughtful and clear, just tough, tough connections though. And then once again, who knows for the Nano? It it's very easy. And by the way, yeah, here is the Nano. I know it's not really part of the major comparison, so much smaller than the rest. In a lot of ways, I would consider this more of like a gesture build. There is no pointed angle along the side armor like you see in the other ones. And the nose is kind of pointy instead of round, but it's such a small size, it doesn't make sense to try and judge it on some kind of weird special accuracy points like I've been trying to do throughout this video. It's clean, it's concise, you can recognize it from afar. The proportions work, it's a solid 
solid little build and you have a couple of nice easy details when you look up close. Alrighty, so now let's get to the conclusion. It's probably not gonna be a big surprise to anybody that's watching which model here is the bestest than the restest. Well, that's not really up for me to decide. At the end of the day, there are a ton of factors to weigh out here. There's detail, there's sturdiness, the overall build experience for you is a big factor. There's space limitations, cost, obviously. But at the end of the day, anybody that gets into any type of niche Lego custom detail stuff is going to have to figure out exactly what they want and don't want from their models. We love detail here in the studio. The challenge of getting something extremely accurate at a certain size is very difficult and kind of addicting to get into. We basically get to see this done with the Nebulon B frigate as the control group, the static thing that doesn't change. It's the base shape and then size, technique, and complexity make their influences on it. All right, so there it is. It's just a quick showcasing of some of our mocks that are lying around in the studio. Let me know if you wanna see more similar types of videos like this in the future. For example, I know we got some different size Razor Crests. There's probably a few frigates, a lot of different kinds of Falcons, something like that. Uh, so anyways, this was just kind of a fun video to knock out. I feel like I spent way too much time talking about it, but it's actually kind of fun just sort of doing a little deep dive into what different scales uh, have to offer. But anyways, uh, there it is. Thank you so much for hanging around, sticking to the end of the video. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, or share. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.